Good morning, this is Kian from CryptoBoost. Really happy to have you here today with me. It's the 25th of July. I'm still in Portugal, going back tomorrow morning, back to Switzerland. It's a nice warm day. It's luckily a lot less warm here than in uh, other parts of Europe, but yeah. I've got a nice uh, list of articles I think you'll find interesting. The first one is talking about um, blockchain is a probable threat to American hegemony. Uh, next up is um, U.S. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, his uh, negative outlook and his dirty secret, talking about money laundering. Um, on a more positive note, we'll be also talking about presidential candidate Andrew Young, pro-crypto candidate. So I think that's a pretty nice collection of articles, so I'll just jump right in. So, a new report says blockchain is a threat to American hegemony. So, blockchain technology has the potential to undermine one of the most powerful means of US influence, its financial dominance, the US dollar. So, a new report from US foreign policy think tank, the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, FDD, says adversaries may use blockchain to reduce the threat of US economic sanctions. So the FTD has previously faced criticism for its alarming rhetoric. However, the report presents a convincing narrative. It singles out four nations under or at risk of US sanctions. So that are already laying the foundations for a new financial infrastructure to operate free from US interference. Now, for decades, U.S. adversaries have been trying to evade and undermine this power, but there has been no way to conduct significant international commerce without moving through the pipes of U.S.-dominated global financial system. However, now new pipes are being built. So, first of all, despite Trump's recent tweet denouncing Bitcoin, the report suggests that it's not just one existing cryptocurrency, but it's the whole public blockchain sector, the blockchain projects that represent the real threat to US financial control. So corporate and government blockchains are said to be building blocks of a system that could in two to three decades aid financial cooperation between adversarial countries and have the means to eclipse US financial power in much the same way that one dollar once eclipsed the British pound. So now ground zero is Venezuela and the country's petrol is painted in the report as a government sponsored scam ICO. So you might have heard of the petrodollar, complete scam, um, lost so much in value. And it's it, like with other scams, it comes with the hyperbolic promises that will be act as kryptonite against the Superman of the US government. And when it launched the Petro, Venezuela promised partnerships with other countries that never came to fruition. So that, that, that just uh, rings scam to me, as it did when they launched uh, this cryptocurrency back in, I think it was uh, beginning or beginning of uh, 2018. So during 2018, the regime pr proclaimed numerous times that the petrol would be used to pay for various domestic transactions, such as real estate, airline tickets, and tourism. However, now, none of these promises planned out. So now the report suggests that Russia alleged to have been covertly cheering on Venezuela's effort against American imperialism will apply any lessons learned to progress its own plans to erode the power of US sanctions. So shortly afterwards, Russia released a policy paper on global trade and stated action was needed to combat the excessive dominance of a limited number of reserve currencies, including the dollar. So. Um, You've got a term is called the petrodollar. At the moment, many countries they trade using this petro, um, using the U.S. dollar as it's acting as a reserve currency. But many countries, especially Asian countries, uh, want to move away from this um, reserve currencies, and that's why they're trying to find new solutions uh, for global trade without having to go through the U.S. So blockchain suggests the FTD report is Russia, Russia's chosen form of action as evidenced by the foreboding words of a Russian intelligence office in 2017 
who told an international blockchain standards conference, the internet belongs to the Americans, but blockchain will belong to us. I think it's a very interesting, um, yeah, power and wealth is shifting as well. So it's going to be very interesting next few decades to see how this shift in power, who will remain at the top and who will maybe um, go down a few ladders in, in terms of uh, dominance. So Iran is also one of these uh, few countries uh, we, we talked about at the beginning. So Iran too has responded to US sanctions with plans for blockchain based currency. But it is China and particularly China's central bank that represents the real threat since it's a massive economy on its own. And it, it, it's just looming on the horizon. So China is less threatened by US sanctions than other adversaries, but displacing US influence in the global financial system is a national priority. And there's been a, a, not only from a, on the financial aspect, but this, you've got also the trade wars and now currently also some um, threats um, that China is prepared to protect its country, including Taiwan, should the US try and, and move uh, and, and, and interfere between the political disputes between Taiwan and China. So it's not only in the financial aspect, but um, the yeah, the, the, the situation at the moment is pretty heated, especially as things just start with the trade war, which, um, yeah, I think all in all, it's, it's going in a very negative direction. Things are going to change. So blockchain wars countering the blockchain resistance suggests the report will be best achieved by encouraging homegrown initiatives and furthering the American ingenuity that is responsible for developing projects like Dash, Hyperledger, Nam, Stellar. So analyzing threat scenarios and recreating a national strategy for blockchain could also play a part, but the key to protecting American foreign policy, it seems, could, could suddenly now depend on the transparency and freedom enabled by Bitcoin and other blockchains. So I think if the, the the regulators the government and so on don't step up their game in terms of regulations for the cryptocurrency space then they would definitely be left behind united states will lose in dominance as other players will enter the market other other governments other countries will enter the market with a much more positive uh, open-minded view on blockchain and will be able to have a first movers advantage and at the moment there are many countries who are already profiting from this first movers advantage and the longer uh, countries are waiting on yeah on, on enabling uh, different projects to grow within a country then um, the longer the longer they wait the more difficult it's going to be to catch up and at some point the train has just left so yeah at the moment I don't see that much uh, change in 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 the government's view especially with uh, Trump and different other important um, figures in in the government they're still very against cryptocurrency and um, I don't see many regulations changing anytime soon but hopefully with the uh, new presidential candidates that might happen so next up is very interesting and I, I like to bring these type of articles because it just shows um, the, 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 the stupidity of, of a lot of people in power and the hypocrisy that that is uh, that is just rampant with many people who have power and then they state their their opinion on different matters they might not understand but especially hypocrisy is is just so annoying so here i've got the u.s treasury secretary m Mnuchin voices new pessimism about bitcoin's future i mean i think it's fine if people um offer criticism on different projects but I want to show you afterwards why exactly I think it's very hypocritical of him in the way that he arguments against Bitcoin and blockchain so we've got United States Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin voiced new bearish views on Bitcoin today saying that he probably will not be talking about the number one cryptocurrency uh, because um, he thinks it's going to be gone from the face of the earth in the next five years so he says, I won't be talking about Bitcoin in 10 years, I can assure you that. 
I would bet even in five or six years I'm no longer talking about Bitcoin as treasury secretary and have other priorities. So Emanushan's latest remarks follow a recent statement about how cryptocurrencies primarily exist as a vehicle for crime and speculative investment, saying, I think to a large extent these cryptocurrencies have been dominated by illicit act activities and speculation. So con uh, money laundering, Emanushan also recently claimed that fiat money is not laundered <laughs> to the extent that Bitcoin is. In a separate Scott Box interview, Emanushan said that US has the strongest anti-money laundering system in the world. Bitcoin on the other hand he believes is vulnerable to money laundering. So yeah, and I think in my, I'm, everyone can have their own opinion, I think that's great, but here is the, the hypocrisy part that I want to talk to you about and that's you just take his name, put it in Google and you look for money laundering and what comes out and I found this article from um, the 19th of January 2017 and that's with Emanution failed to reveal 100 million US dollars in assets links to tax haven company. I mean yeah I can understand I mean like 100, uh, 100 million US dollars it's easy to forget about that uh, happens to me all the time <laughs> but jokes aside I think that's just hypocritical of him talking about money laundering talking about um, illicit activities and he forgets to mention a hundred million US dollar um, uh, in assets and it's linked to to a tax haven so very interesting indeed very interesting so Stephen Mnuchin president-elect can um, president-elect Donald Trump pick for Treasury Secretary found himself on the defensive for failing to disclose 100 million US dollars in real estate assets on his financial disclosure forms before today's confirmation hearing. So Emanushan said his offshore bank accounts in the Cayman Islands were used only to benefit non-profits and pension funds and were allowable by law regarding the omission about his position in the shell co uh, company. Emanushan claimed the mistake was an oversight. Well, as you can see, that's why um, I was talking about the rampant hypocrisy in um, with head figures in the government. I think this is just uh, mind blowing that things like this can just happen. And especially, I think it's important to look at the statements people make after they um, they're very negative on a certain technology. And I think it's understandable that now he's very negative on Bitcoin and and and, and blockchain is because with those. Um, with those technologies you will be a lot more um, accountable to what you buy, what you do use with your money, where you send it to and so on and very often people uh, that are have so many assets don't want to be accountable, they, don't, they want to be able to move the money, hide the money, um, evade taxes and yeah just a bit hypocritical if you ask me. All right, on a more positive note, we're going to talk about the president um, president um, candidate Andrew Young. And he will, Super PAC will accept lightning powered Bitcoin donations, which I think is fantastic. And this could be the first time the lightning network, a Bitcoin scaling solution, officially impacts the US presidential election. Roughly a dozen Bitcoiners who support democratic presidential candidate Andrew Young launched a crypto-friendly super PAC on Thursday and thanks to the PAC's payment processor open note the entity will be able to accept payments from lightning wallets so uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good so although this isn't the first American uh, have donated bit Bitcoin to political campaign initiatives with states like California and South Carolina even banning direct crypto donations um, to the candidates, the 2020 election may be the first with a Bitcoin centric super PAC focused on garnering uh, support for a specific candidate. So furthermore, Yang in particular has come out to be the most crypto uh, pro crypto candidate, even listing an official promise on his campaign's website to promote legislation that provides clarity. And I think this is a very interesting, very, very important um topics that he's discussing and um so presidential candidate andrew young calls for clear guidelines on crypto 
And Andrew Young is one of a number of candidates looking to take on US President Donald Trump in the 2020 presidential election has released a new policy statement for crypto assets. In the statement, Young, who is currently uh, vying for the Democratic Party nomination among uh, a crowded field of candidates, indicated his goal to create clear guidelines in the dig digital asset world so that businesses and individuals can invest and innovate in the area without the fear of a regulatory shift. With the move, Yang becomes the first 2020 presidential hopeful to stake out a specific position on cryptocurrency policy. So he says it's time for the federal government to create clear guidelines as, how, as to how cryptocurrencies, digital asset markets will be treated and regulated so that investment can proceed with all relevant information. And as president, I will promote legislation that provides clarity in the cryptocurrency digital asset market space by defining what a token is and when it is a security so recognizing uh, utility tokens define which federal agency will have a regulatory power over crypto digital asset space and provide for consumer protections in the space and more tax implications owning selling and trading digital assets like clear guidelines for that so all in all i think this is pretty good um, um topics he's going to be addressing he's got a lot more other uh yeah, political arguments that, that speaks for him, but I won't go into detail with that. But I think it's it's all in all, it's very interesting. Pretty happy to see uh, a pro crypto candidate uh, going to the 2020 elections. So that was it for today. For you, for, hope you found these uh, articles interesting. If you've got any comments, then don't hesitate to leave them down below. I'll gladly answer the, them for you. And without further ado, I wish you a great day, great afternoon, and yeah. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.